Building the subframe. Support posts are different to ordinary newel posts in that they must have been preservative pre-treated to a higher level of protection to allow for the post being used in ground contact. This is very important for the long-term performance of your deck and you should check this fact with your decking supplier. QDEC 85 by 85 mm multi-purpose post material, long classic posts and new 1.5 meter and 3 meter contemporary posts meet these requirements and are guaranteed 15 years in ground contact. On our deck design there will be four beams. The distance between beams should be a maximum of 1800 millimeters. However, depending upon the intended use of your deck, these beam distances may need to be significantly less to provide extra strength and stability. The position of the beams will be determined by the joist size, which in turn is determined by the unsupported distance they have to span. Your decking supplier should be able to advise you here, or you can refer to the beam and joist span tables supplied within the document section of this CD. Our beams are constructed using two 44 by 145 mm Q-deck deck joists, fastened to either side of the support posts. We now need to cut the support posts to the required length. If you have a level site, all your support posts will be of a similar length. Because we have a sloping site, the length of each post has to be determined. A useful tool for achieving a general measurement is an infrared spirit level. From a fixed point on your deck site, an infrared beam can be projected onto each support post held in position within its hole. The point can be marked and each post cut. Alternatively, each support post can be concreted into position and then cut to size prior to attaching the beams. Here, the 345 triangulation method of creating a 90 degree angle will help ensure your post positions are square and accurate. When cutting the top of each support post, cut at a slight angle. This will allow rainwater to drain off the posts. Use end seal brush on end grain preservative to seal the cut made to the timber. It is best practice for the opposite end of the post, which will be in ground contact, to be left uncut. If it has been cut, this too should be brushed with end seal. Throughout your decking project, all cuts and notches made to the treated timber should be sealed with end seal available from your decking supplier. The use of N-Seal forms part of the performance warranty of QDEC products. Therefore, it is very important to carry out this procedure. When applying N-Seal end grain preservative, always follow the instructions on the can. The initial blue coloration of N-Seal will quickly change after application to a pale green to blend in with the treated timber. A leaflet on the use of N-Seal is also available within the document section of this CD. To construct our beams, we used two 44 by 145 mm Q-deck deck joists fastened to either side of our outer support posts. This fixing should be temporary at this stage and made with screws. Position the beams with the outer support posts attached into the holes and check the beams are roughly level to each other using a long spirit level. Height adjustments can be made by either hammering down the support posts to drop the level or adding extra P-shingle under the posts to raise the level. When constructing the deck, you should allow a slight fall in one direction, usually from back to front or to one side. This should be a minimum of 1 in 80 to allow adequate rainwater drainage on the finished deck. If you are using grooved deck boards, these should be laid in the direction of this fall to ensure water drainage. Intermediate support posts can now be temporarily fixed with screws at the centre of the beams. Once a final check has been given to the level of all the beams in relation to each other, all the support posts can be concreted into position. Use a thick dry mix of concrete and tamp the mixture down around the post. The finished level of the concrete should be slightly above ground level with the surface beveled away from the post to allow water runoff. These beam structures should now be left overnight, allowing the concrete to set. The following day, again check the levels of the beam structures to each other, with the drainage gradient in mind, a minimum of 1 in 80. Adjustments can be made by unscrewing, raising or lowering to suit, and refixing the screws.
These fixings of the beams to the support posts should now be made permanent using two ledger lock screws or coach bolts. To add extra strength to the subframe structure, angled corner bracings made from more 85 by 85 mm multi-purpose post material can be screw fixed to the outer support posts and up into the beams. Now that the support posts and beams are in position, we can continue to lay our membrane over the turf. Using an edging tool or spade, make an incision into the turf all around the outer edge of the deck area. Bear in mind that the position of this incision will be determined by the eventual position of your deck boards and fascia board vertically above the edge of your deck. Cut lengths of the membrane to suit and with the edging tool or spade push the outer edge of the membrane into the incision in the turf. Continue around all of your deck laying and fixing the membrane. Ensure that the complete area under the subframe is covered with membrane. Make cuts to the membrane to go around support posts and any other structures or deck elements within the subframe area. Overlapping patches can be made if required and fixed into position using metal staples.